Welcome to the final part of Lecture 12. In the last part of Lecture 12, we examined the deformation of a perfectly plastic material when subjected to a uniaxial flow regime. The important result that this allowed us to work out was that of homogeneous work. It's the minimum amount of work required to overcome the internal resistance of material to deformation. Now, real materials are more complex than perfectly plastic materials, and what we're going to look at very briefly in the final part of this lecture is how we would set up an analysis for, say, a Herschel Bulkley fluid in extrusion. Now, let's talk a little bit more about extrusion. On the board in front of you is a schematic diagram of a section through an extrusion. Let me talk you through it. The yellow region is fluid, the blue region is solid, a solid metal probably, a material that can withstand a high pressure because extrusion typically involves high pressures. What I do is I put a pressure on the fluid in the extruder, typically by, say, pushing a ram or sometimes by rotating a screw and pumping material. And that pressure squeezes fluid out of a certain shape of an orifice. In this diagram, we can make the assumption this is cylindrically symmetric. And so what I'm putting is a cross section of a cylinder along its axis. And so we can see that we're going from a large diameter down to a small diameter cylinder. And in some ways we could say, well, you could approximate this as a uniaxial extension. It's more complex than that. So extrusion is used widely for shape forming materials. And as we said in the last part of this lecture, viscoplastic materials usually, unless there's a processing instability, keep their shape post extrusion, which is a very, very useful feature. Now, if we think about real extrusion processes, presumably the pressure we have to apply, that work per unit volume, is greater than the homogeneous work in order to get the extra date to move. So, there is an analysis that one can look through. We're not going to look at the details. There are some more details in your lecture notes if you're interested. We're going to look at the analysis of a cylindrical extrusion system where you have a large diameter barrel, go into a small diameter die. So the large diameter barrel there is the wider piece of yellow, the smaller diameter die is the smaller piece of yellow, and again this is a section through a cylindrical extruder and we're assuming cylindrical symmetry. Now, the analysis that was done is for a Herschel Bulkley fluid. So we've got a yield stress, we've got a consistency index, we've got a power law index, and so it roughly corresponds to some measurable real materials. Now, lots of assumptions were made in the result that I'm just about to show you. For example, it is assumed, first of all, that there is no shear in this system. It assumes, therefore, there is full slip at all the walls, which we know experimentally isn't necessarily true at all. However, on the assumption that there is full slip at the walls, i.e. the walls are lubricated, and on the assumption of conservation of volume, what we can see is if we relate different parts of the flow together through continuity and relate shape changes to the extensional components of our strain rate tensor, we can work out an expression again for work done per unit volume. It involves the homogeneous work. It also involves a lot of terms shown here in blue. I'm not going to talk you through the explanation of all of these. It's beyond the scope of what we're studying in this course. The reason why I've presented it is twofold. Firstly, to say that, look, you can get analytical expressions subject to a great number of assumptions that allow one to calculate the redundant work in an extrusion. The redundant work is overcoming friction. It's overcoming viscous forces. Everything other than the internal resistance to shape change, which of course is the homogeneous work, which also very neatly comes out of this expression. The second reason why I'm putting this result on the blackboard in front of you is as a demonstration that plasticity modelling is complex. And so detailed plasticity modelling typically will be done computationally by numerical methods. And this motivates very nicely the importance of ensuring that our viscoplastic constitutive equations are suitable or can be made suitable for numerical approaches. 
and we're going to talk about that next lecture. A few summary points. One can derive analytical models for redundant work. And remember, redundant work is all the work required to overcome friction, to overcome internal um, viscous forces, all the work over and above the internal resistance of shape change, which is homogeneous work. The analytical model that I presented the result of required many idealizations and many assumptions to be analytically tractable. And that was the reason for showing it, is to underscore the fact that numerical methods are usually used when calculating detailed plasticity shape change. And that will be something that we will look at in close scrutiny at the start of next lecture.